universe is still a place of mystery and wonder. As a cosmologist, I'm exhilarated that we can make some progress towards tackling what seem very fundamental questions. These programs focus on was there a beginning, whether we are alone, what's the future of the cosmos, what is the nature of reality. With each advance, new questions come into sharper focus. The key issue is what we still don't know. We have no idea how widespread intelligence is in the cosmos. From our present knowledge, the most complex things we know about in the universe are ourselves. In particular, our brains. What's remarkable is that atoms have assembled into entities which are somehow able to ponder their origins. We have always been fascinated by our existence. Of all the wonders of creation, life is the most mysterious. And of all creatures, we are the most special. Surely there has to be a reason. Religion offers a simple explanation. God created everything, and only God knows why we are here. Science came to a different conclusion. It found no evidence for a grand plan. Yet recent discoveries have made scientists think again. It seems ancient notions may be closer to the truth than science has ever imagined. Perhaps there is, after all, a creator. And creation may not be what we think it is. Every religion has its own fantastic story to explain our creation. From God making the universe in six days, to an endless cycle of universes created from dead ones, to the whole universe being created in a single divine breath. And one idea underpins all these beliefs. Human beings have a special place in this universe. We are here for a purpose. But as science investigated our origins, a creator became unnecessary, and our special place less special. Historically, we humans have undergone a series of demotions, a series of blows to our ego. First, we sort of took for granted that everything was centered on us. Most, re most uh, religions and mythologies sort of reflect that. And then, of course, uh, we realized that the world was much bigger than we thought. We realized that we're not the center of the universe. We're just living on a spinning ball, which is one planet among many, and a solar system among many, and a galaxy among many. So you might think at that point we should all just collect, commit collective suicide and depression. When cosmologists investigated our creation, they uncovered a process guided by the laws of physics. In the beginning, there was gas, made of simple atoms. Over time, stars transformed these elements into complex atoms. As these heavier atoms spread throughout the universe, they combined to create everything we can see. This whole process was driven not by a creator, but by fundamental physical laws, the laws of nature. Among these laws were values for the speed of light, the force of gravity, 
and the charge carried by electrons. The difference between the law of nature and the uh, law, of, the law of the land, is that you know, no matter what your political persuasion is, we all obey them, whether we like it or not. There's no exceptions to the laws of nature. The precise values for the fundamental laws of nature were set at the very beginning of our universe, in the Big Bang. The rest was just mathematics. The Big Bang was, in a sense, rather simple. You can write down a rather short recipe. From that, you could, in principle, if you had a powerful enough computer, work out what would happen and end up with something rather like our universe. But could it really be that simple? Mathematics might explain how planets form, but not everything. Surely the evolution of life was still mysterious, still special. You know, people think that mathematics is complicated. Mathematics is the simple bit. It's the stuff we can understand. It's cats that are complicated. I mean, what is it in those little molecules and stuff that make up, make one cat behave differently to another, or that make a cat? You know, how do you define a cat? I have no idea. Yet in 1970, John Conway showed that even though life may be baffling in its complexity, the complexity arises from simple rules. The evidence came from a game whose results were so unpredictable that they called it life. Life had the most basic of ingredients, a board with a grid of squares filled with counters. The fate of each counter was governed by rules. Unlike our universe, there were just three. I had this idea that if you had simple rules, um, but not too simple, <laughs> then probably things uh, would, complexity would just develop. We tinkered with the rules and played around and hoped something interesting would happen. And um, eventually we settled on the particular set of rules that we did. Uh, they were sort of slightly modelled on real life. The three rules they arrived at were the equivalents of birth, death and survival. What would happen to any particular square depended on its neighbours. An empty square with exactly three counters around it would give birth, so a new counter is added to the board. Any counter with too few neighbours would die of isolation and be removed from the board. A counter with too many neighbours would die of suffocation and also be removed. And any counter with just two or three neighbours would survive, staying exactly as it was. With only these most basic rules, unpredictable and complex patterns evolved. The board seemed to produce creatures from nowhere. Creatures that crawled. Creatures that fired out smaller creatures. Pumps that looked like a primitive heart. Creatures that spewed out an endless chain of offspring. My little life game is surprising because from the simple rules one wouldn't find, expect to find things that move in a sort of purposive manner and surprise us. That's I suppose why we call it life. It mimics life to a tiny extent. Like a little mini universe. Science dismantled the notion of life created with a purpose. In this rational universe there's no need for a creator. There was no design in life, um, no design whatsoever. It behaves interestingly just as a consequence of random behaviour.
in this random universe, there is no special purpose in our evolution. We are simply the result of atoms, time, and mathematics. Yet some cosmologists still see a greater meaning in our existence. They do not agree that we are coincidental to the universe. The universe, they argue, is irrelevant without us. If you look at the cosmos, right? Sure, we're small, but suppose there were no life in the universe. Wouldn't all this beautiful stuff out there be a complete waste if, if there were no one there to behold it? I think so. I think it's only life which gives any sort of meaning to the universe. And uh, particularly if we, if we turn out to be the only life in the observable universe. It is called anthropic reasoning. Our creation is still driven by mathematics and the laws of nature. But there is something mysterious, indeed very special, in the laws of nature themselves. It looks in some respects as though our universe is rather special. We know the universe allowed our emergence, but it's quite easy to imagine a universe with slightly different properties, in which neither we nor anything as complicated as us could exist. We can imagine, as it were, turning the knobs which were set up at the time of the Big Bang to determine how it expanded and what it was made of. And if we turn the knobs very slightly, we find that we would end up with a universe that would not be so propitious for the emergence of life. Take gravity perhaps the most familiar of the laws of nature. Its value determines how much things are attracted to each other. From us being stuck to the Earth, to the Earth circling our Sun, to the stars held in place in remote galaxies billions of light years away. Just the tiniest adjustment to the value of gravity in a computer simulation of the Big Bang, and our universe doesn't emerge at all. For example, if gravity were very strong, then anything as big as us would get crushed. If there were no gravity at all, then no stars would be able to form because they're held together by gravity. No planets either. And the other laws are equally fine-tuned. Any slight adjustment to their value, and we would never exist. There is no known reason why these values should be set as they are, yet they do seem to be fine-tuned to allow our creation. <laughs> 